Hello, uh, Troy Ackerman, Shadowing Tronics, uh, here once again with um, the art sound off. Um, before I get into the, the topic that I want to do, I actually thought of an example over the weekend that example that I had wanted to put uh, in the research video, um, the art sound off from Friday, and didn't. Um, and I think it's a pretty good example. Um, does anybody remember the 80s and 80s uh, crime drama called Remington Steel? Um, so, you know, it's, it was a show about uh, this woman starts a detective agency, but because of the 80s, she's not sure she's going to be taken seriously, so she creates this male boss named Remington Steel. And then uh, some other guy comes along, kind of takes on that identity, and kind of just moves her way into into her uh, into her business but he's also uh, knowledgeable a lot of things like this he's done a lot of interesting things in life which uh, leads to um, the episode I'm, I'm talking about and it kind of fits into comic creation too so that's why I wish I had remembered it <coughs> on Friday so in this episode and I only caught like the last half hour of it so Someday I would love to catch the whole thing. And I don't usually watch the show. I think my mom used to watch it. Um, but there's an episode in which a comic strip uh, cartoonist um, you know, for newspaper comics um, he was doing some kind of adventure comic and I guess he's murdered or something. And one of the clues that they find um, is that the the uh, the comic art line art. There's a layer of non-photo blue. And that becomes one of the clues. And in the story, Remington, uh, I guess, used to work for one of his other identities or life or whatever. Used to work for a some kind of magazine where they would use non-photo blue pencil to mark off certain things in the magazine. So now here is in this comic strip, non-photo blue used. And I'm not going to give away any details. I don't remember the whole thing very well anyway. But this comes part of the clue as to who the who might be the murderer. And I, that's kind of that's a level of knowledge that I really wouldn't expect out of a TV show like this, because Hollywood gets so much wrong. But here they got this part right. I don't know if the writer. Um, is familiar with comics, or if he did his research, he said, I want to do a story about comics, so let me learn what I can about comics, and then this becomes kind of a clue to using non-photo blue. For those of you who don't uh, know a lot about comic creation, non-photo blue for comic creators, when I was doing, when I'm doing um, paper drawing, I'll use a non-photo blue pencil to kind of block out the, the page, not so much the... Uh, doing any of the rough, rough art or anything. Some cartoons do that. The thing is with non-photo blue is it's a shade of blue that unless you make it really dark will not get picked up by a photocopier or a computer scanner or any of that. So that's why some cartoonists will use it uh, for their pencil, for the penciling. So others may use it for the roughs. I just use it to kind of block out the um, the panels, like where the panels are and um, I mean, it's where the characters need to be and stuff like that. I uh, so the fact that they act, that this is actually uh, researched and is used as part of the story, like I said, that's research and that's something that you can use in your work. Um, I wanted I had wanted to ramble on a bunch of bunch of other ideas, make this just kind of a a rambly topic, but. Um, I don't remember what the other things were I want to talk about, so I'll just jump into uh, this topic here because this is this is an interesting one. It kind of uh, is something that um, was actually brought up earlier this year. Um, I'm not going to go into full detail because it gets into some of the current drama uh, when it comes to to uh, to comics or whatever, and I'm not going to get into that here. Um, but uh, the basic gist of this. Of the debate was 
creators versus fans, like how much should a creator listen to a fan? And I guess there were some creators that were act, acting like they should never listen to a fan at all. There were fans who insisted they have to listen to him all the time. It, it, and the person that I was using uh, to discuss the topic, I guess, was somewhere in the middle, which is, I think, where it should be. But um, <clears throat> when it comes to listening to fans, there's kind of two ways to think about this. One is if you're doing um, somebody else's work, if you're continuing uh, a franchise or a t or title that's had multiple storytellers versus your own work. That's something you're doing for yourself. Now, if you're taking doing something like um, Iron Man, your Iron Man is your unless you're somehow Stan Lee is watching this. Hey, Stan, uh, you probably didn't create Iron Man. You're in the legacy of all the writers that shadow of all the writers that came before. I know you want to stand out, and I want you you want to do your own thing. But here's the thing: the fans of this character of Tony Stark and the rest of the cast, most likely, unless you're a fan yourself, know the character better than you. They know what they want. They know what they want to see. And to ignore that, to not give the fans what they want for whatever reason, is going to kind of hurt you. On the other hand, you are also trying to tell your own story. And there's nothing wrong with that either. You want to tell your own Iron Man your own way, but you've got to... <clears> the <throat> thing is, with something like this, you've got to listen to him. But which fans do you listen to? And I'll get back to that. But um, <clears throat> the fans know Iron Man. They know what they came to Iron Man for. Maybe you brought some of your fans from your own work, but... I never understand when you're writing this character, you're writing continuity. You're writing everything that came before and building on that. <clears throat> and if that's not what you're doing, the fans are going to get upset and they're not going to read your stuff because that's not what they're here for. <clears throat> so how do you balance that, making the fans happy with the kind of stories you want to tell? This is what's... This is probably the dance that you've got to do and I can't really tell you because I can only go into specific examples of specific creators and I'm not about to go into that this is a general, this is more of a general point um, but to ignore the fans and say I'm not going to listen to the fans that's a good way to lose the only fans you'll have left are, the, are your fans fans of the char fans of the character are either only getting it out of just habit or they're going to drop the book and you lose readers and you get people mad at you so when you because you're not this isn't your idea you're continuing this series of things that came before you and you've got to make the fans happy as well as trying to bring a new bring a new readers you've got to it's a balancing act you get a plate now if you're doing your own work then you, you have a little more control over over it versus the fans. You, the fans came to see your work. You know, if it's an original creation, um, for example, I'm doing Captain Yuletide. If I had a big fan base, I still would want to listen to the fans. You know, what things they found interesting, what things they that I know they liked and they wanted to see more of. Can I incorporate this into my work, into the future stories? On the other hand. Because it is my creation, and I know what I want to do with it, and what I plan to do with it, I can take a little more control on my for myself. I can say, you know, this is the story that I want to tell with this. I'm not going to change the tone or change the pace to just to make a certain group happy. But I am going to listen to the fans when they point out things, and they say when these were it seems pretty obvious that it should go in this direction just because of the way I've been going. So maybe the direction I wanted to go, the story kind of went in its own way and it's doing its own thing. And, uh, sorry. Uh, I'm getting annoying. 
Um, just an itch there. And I want, you have to listen to that and say, okay, maybe they have a point here. Maybe I was going this way the whole time and I didn't realize it. Or maybe this is just how events would naturally play it, naturally play out within the confines of the world I've created and the characters I've created. So maybe I do need to, on this one, follow the fa fan suggestion and go this way. Because you want, you need to keep the fans happy. But at the same time, there are fans that you don't listen to. The ones who insist that, a, for example, a certain coupling has to be done because they think these couple would look nice together. But that's not the direction you've been heading. That's not the direction the story's been heading. Especially if you, people who've seen them insist that the arguing couple are immediately going to get together. You know, like Sam and Diane or uh, Cheers or the show Moonlighting. You know, oh look, they're arguing, they're fighting, they're obviously hot for each other. Like, no. That's, if that's not the way you, you wanted to go, you don't have to. And the fans are insisting on that. It's going to be a destructive romance, and that's not what you're trying to put together. Then you shouldn't have to. Or, you know, character... They want to change that on character because of their own cultural bi and personal biases, and they want to see versus how you've written these characters and how you want to tell their story and what the characters metaphorically are telling you about uh, about themselves. So, you know, that's also a question. There's, there are fans that you don't listen to for whatever reason because they're not really interested in your story. They're interested in seeing certain things in a story and they're going to insist you put those things in there whether it works for the story or not. That's kind of the thing with me is and what's in the is the story matters first. And if the fans are right and the story needs to go in a certain direct should be going in a certain direction, or it's just naturally flown that way. But I mean if you don't want to tell a darker story, you don't have to tell a darker story. If you if you're creating your own characters, you have a little more say into who and what they are than if you're continuing somebody else's characters. And that's kind of so that's kind of a, a dance that you got to play is how do you make the fans happy versus how do you tell the stories you want to tell and create the characters you want to create or this is the way I've seen these other characters. That's why it bugs me when you've got a writer or even an editor who does not understand the characters. And this has happened more than once to, to the Titans and the Teen Titans. Um, somebody who does not understand these characters, who should not be writing these characters, quite frankly, and then uh, they are. So they, this, is, this is the time when you really should have the right people for the job on there, and you should need to have a good understanding of the characters you're writing. If you're writing the characters yourself, probably even more so because you created these characters and you don't understand your own creations, you're kind of screwing up. Um, so, I mean, that's that's kind of the balance you got to play. You do have to listen to the fans, but you've got to be careful, that, be sure that the people you're listening to are actually fans of the work, actually are making point good points on what the character should be doing <clears throat> and making sure that you're creating the, just the best stories you can and and um, so I mean that's kind of you can't completely ignore the fans but you can't also be a slave to the fans you have to be able to tell your story but know the universe you're working with. Stay consistent to any writers that came before you while still being able to put your own unique voice and spin on it. That's kind of the um, kind of the balancing act you've got to deal with. So um, I hope that made sense. If not, say so in the comments. I'll, I'll also post the, the article. It is a little more um, tied into some of the drama, but I've tried to keep keep as far away from it as I can, so we can get back to the 
purity of the problem and the solution. Because uh, that's kind of what I do. I focus on the end product more than on the backstage drama. Um, and if you want to see some of that, more of that kind of thing, you can go to my website, bwspotlight.com, articles, comics, and videos examining the art of storytelling. If you want to see what the other sound off participants are doing, uh, the Twitter hashtag art sound off or is the uh, best way to find us all. And if you want to take part yourself, go to artsoundoff.com. It'll tell you how to set up an audio or vlog experience where you can discuss your own points of view on comic creation. So, <clears throat> with that, I will see you tomorrow, and I wish you all happy creating.